All right, on to the most obvious of the crises in our country, the economics crisis. And it's a real honor to have John Molden on again. John Molden is the investor's investor. He's the man who tells investors what to do. Best-selling author. And uh, over a million people read his newsletter each week. And you can get it, by the way. It's free, johnmolden.com. John, welcome back to the Dennis Prager Show. Dennis, it's always good to be with you. Well, thank you. I, 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 well, it might always be good to be with me, but you're the sort of thing, it's like the doctor when he says to you, say, how are you, Mr. Prager? <laughs> to which my answer is, sir, if I were okay, I wouldn't be with you. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> it's always good for me to be with you, but I'm, we should get together at happier times, maybe. Well, well we're going to have to wait a year or two, I think, for that. Well, looks and even that is no, a, not a year. Really? That, that, all right. Well, I, there are questions. The more I read, the, the more certain questions become riddles to me. So I'll begin with number one. Is it true that half of the $700 billion has already been dispensed by the government? No, I think they're through 230, 240 is what I read this morning. Okay. M- may I ask where that went? Uh, it's gone to banks primarily. Uh, shoring up capital. Some of it uh, uh, has, has been used with AIG. Some of it, uh, it's just various financial institutions. Uh, I mean, you see that American Express, for instance, has decided they want to become a bank because and it's a very smart move on their part. Actually, it's a brilliant move. Uh, they do credit cards, okay? They're not really a bank, but they apply to be a bank because that means they're now going to go be able to borrow money from the Fed at Fed funds rate. Uh, just like any other bank can do. I mean, there's no special. Well, that just lowered their cost of capital, you know, dramatically. It's the Fed funds rate being one, one and a half, you know, something like that. They'll be able to borrow at it. They get the discount. They don't get, get the actual rate. But, you know, they're probably going into the market. They're probably having to borrow seven or eight. They just made themselves wildly profitable for a period of time. It was, I mean, it was like. Was it reflected in their stock? Um their stock hasn't gone down that much, but I, I, but I have to be careful here, uh, Dennis. I really don't look at stocks. I look at managers, um, and so uh, uh, I'd have to look at uh, American Express stock. Maybe I can pull it up here on my screen while we're talking. But it, but it was. I think it was a, a smart move. But you know, other other entities are you know, uh, General Motors acceptance, GMAC. They want to become a bank uh, so that they can get uh, right. In other words, anybody who loans money. Well, I've been trying to figure out how to become a bank. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if, if I could borrow if, money at if, a half percent, I, I if, can figure out right, how to listen, make money. All right, listen, if you need a spokesman, give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I mean, so, it, it, so it, wait, it, let me understand then. So $230 billion has gone to various lending institutions. Let, let's put it that way. Right. All right, fair enough. Has it done any good? And I, I'm not saying it hasn't. The question is not being asked in the negative. But just has it done any good that you can measure? Uh, yes, it has in the following way. Uh, it's kept things from imploding. So, so I mean, it, it's one of those, you know, trying to prove a negative uh, question. The system hasn't imploded, and it would have before. Uh, it's going to require, unfortunately, more money. Uh, the $700 billion is probably a down payment. It could go as high as one to one five trillion. Uh, I mean, we, we just have to understand the markets are seriously, uh, 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 cut, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of a nice word, but they're, they're seriously. Well, uh, what's the uh, not nice word that can be said on radio? Screwed up. But the markets froze. To give you an give you an example of part of the problem, there are. Funds called collateralized loan obligation funds, CLO, and they operate in the background. You never know about them, okay? Uh, 99.8% of your readers have never heard of CLOs, but we're talking hundreds of billions of dollars, really big deals, okay? Most of them have in their covenants <coughs> that they cannot buy loans uh, at less than 85 cents on the dollars without having to take a haircut to their capitalization, if they take a haircut to the capitalization, then the managers have to say we're going to be making less money, and the managers like make less money, and it could be significantly impair the manager's ability to make money. Well, there's a lot of really, really good loans from great corporations, 
selling at 80 cents on the dollar. Now, you would think that there would be big pools of money trying to buy this stuff at 80 cents on the dollar and 75 cents on the dollar, and there are. New funds are being formed to buy that debt. But the old pools of money that's still around, that's trying to find stuff to buy, because they, they, these, these uh, funds, these CLOs, buy bonds. And so every month they get interest and some of the bonds get paid off. So they have to put that new money that's come back into the fund, they have to put it to work. Well, it's getting hard for the CLOs to find stuff to put to work because the stuff is selling too cheap below their covenants. Now, I know that sounds wrong, but that's just the way it is. That's why the markets are getting more and more frozen. So if you go out and raise new money, and I was talking to a manager today that thinks he's going to, here in the next few weeks, he's going to raise $500 million, um, and they're going to go out and buy these loans at 75 and $0.80 cents on the dollar because they're going to make a lot of money doing it. But it, that's just a, why that, are those that, loans? That, that, that well, takes time. And, and, uh-huh. and that's so why you're up, that's why you're optimistic. Well, uh, yes. I mean, we we get we muddle through these things. Uh, I mean, the, the real reason I'm optimistic, uh, Dennis, is that it, most of the listeners don't remember 1974 and 1982, and how bad things got, and the Japanese were going to buy everything, and the world was coming to an end. Um, and, 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 you know, unemployment, uh, you know, shot up to 8, 9, 10 percent. I mean, it was, it was pretty ugly in, in, in places. Uh, you know, and, and if you're unemployed, it's not a recession. It's a depression. Um, I mean, it, that's, you know, so it, it's, it, it feels very bad when you're trying to work through it. But what happens is American entrepreneurs will figure out what they have to do for their business to make their business work. Now, that may mean laying off people. That may be mean trying to buy their uh, their uh, 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 competition because they're stronger. I mean, uh, we, we work through these things, and that's what... Yeah, but in, in, the, in the years you mentioned, something like Citigroup did not lose half its worth in four days. Well, that's true, but other companies... Did. I mean, we saw Continental Illinois go away. We uh, we had insurance companies disappear. Uh, I mean, uh, the, there were different crises in different industries. This particular one happens to be a financial crisis, primarily, and that's a problem because that's the blood, if you will, that circulates through the system. Right. All right. When we come back, I want to understand why we had a blood clot. Uh, to keep uh, your analogy alive. I'm speaking to John Malden. His newsletter is johnmalden.com. I'm Dennis Prager.